Hello everyone and welcome back to the resume series. Today we're finishing the rest of the resume templates, the functional and hybrid resumes. Again, I only meant to dedicate two videos to the resumes, but the second video would have been too long by internet standards if I kept all three formats together. So here we are, resume part 2.5. First up, we have the functional resume. Usually the functional resume is looked upon as a weak offering because basically it's not as common as the chronological resume. This is due to the functional's shift of focus from the work history to the other aspects of a worker. However, some people will be in situations where using a chronological format can be detrimental to their chances of being hired. These situations all include a significant lack of work history, but for various reasons. For those who just graduated college, there will more than likely be a lack of significant professional work history. If you work the typical high school and college side jobs, you can still include these. However, you won't want to hinge your resume on them. Instead, you'll want to focus more on your education, internships, extracurricular activities, and ultimately anything relevant to your desired career. Another situation where a functional resume is preferable is when you've decided to switch careers. Let's say you have a person who has worked in production for 10 years. They've decided that this career isn't playing to their strengths anymore and feel like an office job would make them happier. If you submit a chronological resume that expands upon your production work, even if your qualification summary is relevant enough, HR might pass you up. A functional resume, while not altogether hiding the work history, minimizes its impact and gives the resume more breathing room to focus on the relevant information. In this situation, you'll want to focus on relevant skills that you developed on your own or even in your current job. And once again, a skills inventory can help you with this. Finally, some people either have a large recent gap in employment, think years, or don't have any at all. In this case, you need to look as inward as possible. What house chores do you perform? Do you track your family's finances? Have you helped a friend or family members with something before, like moving, residential construction, repairing something? Do you have any hobbies? Do you use any computer programs at home? Do you organize at home, whether electronically or physically? Once again, sitting down and doing a skills inventory on yourself will help. And yes, I know, I'm a broken record on this, but seriously, skills inventory. Tremendously helpful. Okay, let's get down to the actual content of the functional resume. Same with the chronological resume, start with the contact information. After that, the next part will actually be the bulk of this resume. Skills and personal accomplishments are usually the two best sections you can use here. You can follow the example here and have both the skill summary and a professional accomplishment list, or you can use one or the other. In the skill summary, you'll want to focus on the most relevant hard skills and soft skills related to the position. Now, some of you might be confused as to why I just refer to skills like they're taco shells. Well, let me elaborate. When someone mentions hard skills, they're talking about specific skills related to job functions. Examples include using Microsoft Office, coding websites, operating forklifts, inspecting parts on a production line, and testing chemicals in a lab. If you're performing an action on the job, it's a hard skill. Soft skills are something that's not as directly tied to a task. That's because these are underlying traits in your work performance. Examples include team player, strong communication, time management, empathy, and leadership. However, hard skills do pack a more significant punch because they do a better job of illustrating your capabilities on the job. So how do you list these skills? Well, there's two ways I suggest. First, you can just list them individually. Nothing fancy, just list the most relevant skills. If you want something that looks more organized, you can categorize skills like I did here. Neither one is the correct method, you just have to pick the one that works best for you. If you want additional functional resume skill categories, you can just do a Google search. That's where I found this vast list you're seeing right here. Next, let's talk about professional accomplishments. Just like skills, you can either list these individually or you can split them up into categories as shown in the example. Some common examples include management, customer service, Microsoft Office, supervisory, financial, and data entry. As the customer service example shows, you can feature both achievements 
such as developed a script for other workers to follow while engaging with customers, and accolades like awarded excellent customer service plaque in 2018. After the skills slash accomplishments, the rest of the document is bare bones. First, you have the work history. Since we're not framing skills around your exact employment experience, all you'll need to put down for this one is your employer, position, dates, and location. For the education history, at least your degree, school, and location. Of course, you can always add an additional information section, but for this type of resume, everything should fall under one of the previously mentioned sections. The last thing we're going to discuss in the video is the hybrid resume. And really, there's not much to talk about here. It's a combination of the skills breakdown from the functional resume and the qualification summary and work history from the chronological resume. If you're seeing a breakdown of both skills and work history, you're looking at a hybrid resume. Ultimately, you need to find the resume that suits you the most. But remember, everything on the resume needs to serve one purpose, and that's to make the employer interested enough in you to schedule an interview. And that's a wrap on the resume videos. These videos aren't the end all be all when it comes to crafting a resume. I highly encourage you to conduct your own research and develop your own style. At the very least, I hope that these have acted as a launch pad for you. Once again, don't forget to take advantage of some of the other services that EVPL offers. We have BrainFuse Job Now, a website portal for all of your job search needs. There's also the EVPL Central Reference Desk if you need assistance with research. Finally, you can book a librarian for one-on-one -on -one assistance for various things. As always, take care of yourselves and be safe out there. I'll see you next time.